We're here now with Yanis Varoufakis and Shreko Herbert, um, the founders and participants of the Democracy in Europe movement. So I want to ask you a question based more on the activism and grassroots movements part. Um, Deem 25, a lot of all movements that have occurred in the past, like Occupy, or, or which was a success in terms of consciousness, but not in terms of its longevity or its sustainability. What are the strategies that you guys are using to make sure that this movement lasts for a longer time with the grassroots level? Well, look, let, let, let's um, talk about the anthropogeography of this meeting that we just had. Think about it. We have representatives from green parties, from feminist organizations. We have from Blockupy, as you mentioned. But at the same time, we have the head of IG Metall, a trade union in Germany that everybody knows, with 2.4 million workers. We have people from the SPD, we have people from the Linke, we have people from Barcelona. Uh, from the movements uh, at the level of municipality, the people from Britain, who are not usually part of Central European movements. Uh, we have people from uh, the Czech Republic, we have people from uh, Poland. That is unique. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we've managed to do this before in the movements in the last few years. Something is brewing in Europe. These movements have now had a chance, and there's no guarantee, a chance of coalescence, of convergence into a surge, the democratic surge that we want. Yes, as, as Yanni said, uh, uh, both of us, but also other people who are present here in Berlin, have been participating in many social movements and networks and forums in the last decade, uh, starting from the World Social Forum in Porto Alegre 2001, uh, through Genova protests, uh, and then, of course, this huge wave of protests all around the world in 2011, uh, with the occupations of squares Puerta del Sol, Syntagma Square, Tsukoti Park in New York, and so on. Uh, but what is new here, I think, I hope at least, what is new is that uh, we don't only include movements, we don't only include trade unions, uh, classical political parties, but for example, during these meetings today, we had people who are uh, uh, activists of Tor or WikiLeaks, like uh, never before I have seen that so many people who come from the field of technology were interested in bringing more democracy. And we know there is no democracy without technology. Actually, technology could help us today to bring more democracy. So what we can see uh, only from this first meeting, but also other meetings and people who supported the manifesto, for example, example, uh, from Ken Loach, Eva Eva Luz, uh, Tony Negri, Julian Assange, we can see that uh, people got together who uh, usually weren't together. So we also have people from, from Front Pop Demos, people from Front de Gauche are here as well. Uh, the Labour Party is very interested and, and, and supportive of Diem. What we can see is that we are really in a political momentum currently in the European Union, where I think that we can go only in one direction, and the one direction is democracy, or the other direction will be the dystopia, which will be very similar to the dystopia uh, during the first, uh, fir first World War and Second First World War. So um, we're faced with uh, forces that have immense power. Some people call them totalitarian institutions, like the uh, banking and hedge funds, uh, be it the NSA surveillance state, uh, be it uh, uh, the Monsantos. Uh, people feel hopelessness. Uh, let's take example of a single mother who is on unemployment benefits, her, she's just lost her husband, or a person studying in the university uh, burdened with a lot of uh, deadlines, uh, people working on bar jobs. Um, what would you advise them uh, if they're facing fears or questions about engaging in such a movement? The only thing that you can use as a weapon to pose this panoply of evil, <laughs> to use a, a rather emotive term, uh, is hope. So how do you inspire the single mother? Uh, how do you instill hope in her? Through this convergence of the movements, of movements that are powerful, but which tend to um, shrivel and die when left on their own. This convergence with existing established organizations from previous generations and centuries of struggles like the trade unions, for instance. It is the only possible source of hope for the single mother, the disaffected, uh, unemployed 58-year-old who is unemployable given technological change, to the people in, in Greece who have to survive, uh, whole families on one puny little pension which is being cut, to the people in uh, Ireland who have been battered for years by austerity and now uh, are coalescing around one issue, water, uh, so as not to allow this 
kind of movement to die out. We need to bring them all together with established institutions uh, to produce the possibility of hope. Sergo, do you want to comment on that? Uh, I could only agree, uh, uh, not because we agree on all the things, and I think uh, uh, the perspective of DMs comes precisely from the fact that we don't have to agree on all the things. So it's pluralism, which is the which should be the DNA of, of democracy in Europe movement. Uh, but I gr could only agree completely with Yanis Varoufakis because I had the opportunity uh, to be in Greece, in Athens, uh, uh, during the during summer last year when the referendum was happening and when Yanis Varoufakis was still the Minister of Finance in, in Greece. And what I could have seen on the squares, on the streets, uh, preceding the referendum, and also what I could have seen from the votes of the referendum, 62% of the people voted no to austerity measures was precisely hope that there is a political force which can change the status quo in, in Europe and that there is an alternative. But also what is very important to see is that you could have seen on the European level at that time uh, that many other people who are in the same situation, as you say, mothers, unemployed people, young people, I come from a country, from Croatia, where you have 50, 54% of unemployment among young people. All of these people during the Greek referendum also came together and they were looking at Greece as a symbol of resistance. And I think what we have to do, uh, and it is our responsibi responsibility if we want to save the European Union, and if we don't want to go into the direction of new wars and new fascism, which is around the corner already, we have to re revitalize precisely this hope which existed during the referendum in, in Greece as one of the symbols. We can take also other symbols in Europe, uh, refugees, people who are helping refugees today. We can, we can take occupations of squares and all this energy. And I think it is bad if we don't come together and if we don't work on all these energies. And I think it's very important what the honesty, what you just said, it's not just the energy of the, of the last two or three years or Arab Spring or Occupy. It's actually centuries of struggle and we cannot forget the centuries of struggle. We should learn from it and we should go a step further. So last question to make it short. Um, this is from the public, this question, and there's a big complaint about this, so I'm going to pose it to uh, both of you, starting with Giannis. Uh, the architects of policy, when they make a decision to go to war, don't go to the war themselves. When they vote for wage cuts, they don't have a wage cuts on themselves. So from the public, this question comes, whatever you decide and vote for, should policymakers be also um, be at a minimum wage, whatever it is, you know, should they also be part of what they voted for, um, face the consequences themselves? Is this something that Deem 25 could implement? Well, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something from the, my personal experience of the last year. Uh, the first decision I took as the Minister of Finance was to reduce our salaries, uh, the, pol the politician salaries, uh, to get rid of the two luxury BMW cars that were in the ministry uh, and just go to ministry on my motorcycle um, and uh, also to reduce by 40 percent, 40 percent, that's a big sum, um, the salaries of the former bankers that were staffing the Hellenic Financial Stability Facility which was the, the part of the bailout fund from Europe that was operating in Greece. So. Uh, the, 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 your, your question has already been answered mm. in practice. So, vote for war, you go to war. Is that is if somebody votes for war? Is there that is something? No as a good war. Okay. And we will never vote for it. Serko, any last comments on that? Um, I, I comment only on, on on this situation where we are. Uh, uh, all of us, including me and Yanis, all of these people who are here, and we have activists from, from all European countries, but also beyond, not only not only Europe, uh, they paid by themselves. Uh, flights, trains, cars, they tr paid by themselves hotels, some people are staying at friends' places mm -hmm. and so on. And we are happy to have the event at Volksbühne who had a sort of budget. But you know, when you organize such a thing, such a huge thing, you need simultaneous translation, you need independent media as you are doing and so on. Uh, so we are very happy, I and mean, that's a part, uh, partly answer to your question that what we are preaching, what we are preaching, what we are trying to achieve, and this is democracy, uh, uh, it has we to be self-organized we as practice. well, and we practice it. And we are happy that many comrades practice it as well. Yanis Varoufakis, Serko Horvat, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks.